All right, we have success. We're getting started. Let's even get the slides pulled up here. All right, it went all the way to the end. So let me get back to the beginning. There we go. All right. Well, welcome to the Friday Night Bible Study. Continuing, this is week six. We're in chapter two still. Um, and tonight our topic is faith that works. All right? No, it's not, you know, just works. It's faith that works. All right, so let's uh, bow our heads. We'll have a quick prayer and then we'll get started. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Once again, uh, for bringing us to another Sabbath day, to a Friday night Bible study. Lord, we thank you for the time we've enjoyed together before this study. We ask you to send your spirit to be with us during this study. Guide us and give us understanding and lead us to truth. We thank you for asking these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Faith that works. If you think about faith that works, what comes to mind? Live eternally. You live eternally. All right, so you're thinking salvation by faith. Yeah. So you want to make sure you have the kind of faith that leads you to that yeah. that destination. Okay, I like that. I was thinking of uh, in, in life, when you get something, you want to get something that works, right? If you want to get, get it by a car, you want to buy a car that works. I've had all kinds of cars. Some of them didn't work so well. You know, I had the one where I'd, I'd pull into the gas station and top, uh, I'd top off the oil and check the gas. You know, it was one of those type of things. And so, you know, if you're, if you're going to be driving from Indiana to Florida, you want a car that works. It'll get you to your destination. You don't want that. That car, by the way, it blew up on me halfway through Kentucky one day. So, I'm at so that car did not work. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was bad. It was bad. Uh, yeah, we're recording. Uh, we are recording. All right, so let's take a look at the text we have today our, that we're referencing is James 2.26. says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. I think that's a pretty, pretty, pretty vivid picture. Now, when he's saying the body without the spirit, or we know it's the spirit that gives us life. So when the spirit leaves the body, all right, then we're dead. We're just we're just no more. So faith without works is just like that body. That's dead. So is, is it going to get you anywhere? No. no. Just faith. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to study different types of faith. We're going to look at dead faith. And saving faith, now you think we could stop after saving faith, but we're actually going to look at the faith of demons, and then Abraham's faith and the faith of Rahab, which are two examples of saving faith. And uh, we'll determine what it means to actually have a saving faith. So we're going to start with James 2.14, and as you can guess, our study is going to take us from James 2.14. 2.14 all the way down through the end of chapter 2 so that next week we should be able to start chapter 3. All right, so James 2.14 says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? Now he's asking a question, which he's going to answer later. But can faith save him? Now we all believe that we're saved by faith, right? You can't be saved without faith, but what does it mean to have faith? Right. You think about that for, for a minute. I always used to like to think of the example of a uh, cruise ship. I, this may be why my wife doesn't want to go on a cruise ship, because I, I think of this example. You know, you have lifeboats on the cruise ship. You can have faith in those lifeboats. You say, I have full faith in those lifeboats, but the boat... It's an iceberg. Think Titanic, right? Starts to sink, and they say, you got to get in the lifeboats, right? And if you never get in the lifeboats, what good does that faith do? See, I, I, I believe that lifeboat can save me, but I don't ever get in. That's neat. Yeah. So that's why she doesn't ever want to go on a cruise with me, I guess. I don't know. She's afraid the boat's going to sink. But anyhow, so how do we understand this verse in context of salvation by faith alone? We're going to look at some texts. So the first one's James 2, 15 through 17. So it picks up right after he asked the question. And 
Paula, can you read that one? Yeah. All right. I'll, we'll start here. And we'll just go around this way. Then Romans 3, 27 and 28 would be next. And then the third one is Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Some of you know James 2, 15. Through James 2, 15 through 17. Uh-huh. But reckless being in destitute of daily And when you get to them, depart from peace, be warm and filled. But you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? That also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. All right, so interesting example. Now here, it's talking specifically about what good does our faith do somebody else, right? Because it's talking here about we're telling him, you know, to, to, to be good or go on his way and be well, but we don't do anything to help them. Just saying words. Yeah, just saying words. I often wonder, you know, people say they're going to pray for you. How many of them actually do? Yeah. Well, I like I like the little uh, the prayer. <laughs> Some people, it's just say I'm praying for you, and they they move on, and that's it's just a thing they say. It's like good morning or how are you today, and they don't really want to know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no. Right. They don't. A lot of time. A lot of times, people really don't. It's it just becomes a reflex of things. So Christians like to say we're praying for you. And a lot of times they don't. But I like to see in that little chain we have going uh, in the WhatsApp where they actually will type the prayer in. Okay, so you had to take the time to do that. Or I've even seen some people record the prayer, which is cool because then you can play it over and over again. You can record it and, and drop an audio file in there and of the Ryu brain form. Yeah. All right. So I won't mention any names because there's one person who tries to do it all the time and never gets but like two or three seconds and cuts themselves off. So, yeah, we know what they're trying to do. They're trying to pray for you, and they just haven't quite figured out the technology. But they're actually going through. Yeah. Yeah. You check out the thread sometime. You can actually see where some people have, have done audio files. But that's, that's a pretty neat way. If you're going to pray for someone and then actually pray for them, record it, and send it to them. Yeah, I just... I have a book. Maybe mm-hmm. so I can. I have to do that. I have to keep a list. And then I'll, I'll pray and I'll just stop and I'll have to look at the list. And, you know, it's it happens. It comes with age. All right. So that's one aspect of faith that works, right? Let's look at uh, Romans 3, 27, 28. Why Therefore, we conclude that man is justified by faith in part, except the law. All right. So here he's reaffirming that it's the faith that saves you, not the deeds that you do. Right. And then Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. All right, so he's making it very clear. Your works don't save you, right? They don't save you, but you should still have works. Right? I think that, I think that verse specifically speaks to people. I've met people who don't believe in like Jesus or are not actively, actively trying to go to church or stuff. And they go, listen, I'm such a good person. I've donated this. I've helped people. I've built whatever for poor people. I have worked with this and this and this and this. If God doesn't see how good I am, then I don't want that God as well. So I feel like that is the part where it's talking about, especially as you believe that it's Jesus, not mm-hmm. that for you, for how much you work. Because that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's like they're they're trying to uh, get enough checks on the the right side of the column here so that they can balance out any of the bad stuff they've done before. Well, you know, are supposed to do so many things. You know, obviously, so many things, and then you're Yeah. So it is. Most religions have some element of that where you you do the deeds to earn. Uh, whatever your reward is varies from religion to religion. Yeah. 
Hello. Yeah. 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 Being being part of any particular denomination does not earn you any bonus points as far as salvation goes. Because look, Jesus himself said he has followers in other churches. He has children all over the place. Um, so, yeah, we don't get any bonus points for that. Definitely not. So the question here, then, we ask, and this is leading us into dead faith, how can we uh, learn to better express our faith through our works while protecting ourselves from the deceptions that our works save us? So we want to do the works, right? We want to do good things. We're always talking about we need to do more outreach. But how do we do that in a way so that we're not deceiving ourselves that we're doing a great thing? So that's what we have to, I think, you know, give it to God for time. Mm -hmm. You know, even the planning, you know, I used to get all obsessed and crazy about it. And so I do lots of things pray about it and, you know, and give it to God and he will help you. And then, and then if it is good, you also want to give the glory to God too. And I'll say, oh, well, yeah. what I did, because you did it good. Definitely. Yeah, but faith is more important. Yeah. But you can't faith without work. I mean, if you don't have any works, I mean, if, if the church doesn't do any work, if the people in the church don't do any work, how many people are you going to bring well, to Jesus? Right. And the other thing is, too, as you say that, too, it's a personal thing, too. It's not like like me. Like, oh, I did this big prison. It's like, what do you do every day? Mm -hmm. Right. People. Are you me? No. The stuff that some people never see. Right. So what I'm hearing is it needs to be more of a way of life mm -hmm. or a habit rather than just trying to check off a to-do list. Okay, I like that. I think it also we need to keep uh, the main thing the main thing. Right? Keep the focus on Jesus. It's not, you know, what can I do to show them that, hey, I'm here. What can I do to draw them to Jesus? And I'd be perfectly happy if they didn't know who I was at the end of it. It's, it's great. Um, so I actually heard a, as a Christian artist had a song like that, uh, says he doesn't care if nobody knows his name, as long as they know, know Jesus. I can't remember who the singer is, but that's okay. I shouldn't be promoting well, that's right. other, other people here. Right. He, he, he doesn't care if you don't know his name. I remember the song. I love the words. I can't remember his name. So he was successful, right? He had great works. All right. So let's look at a saving faith. So we know that a faith that doesn't work isn't saving anybody. You're not going to save you. You're not going to save anybody else. So let's look at James 2.18. Someone would like to read that for us? Someone may well say, I'll tell you my Ooh, Ooh, I think about that. How do you show your faith? without works I mean how would you how would you show God that you have faith without actually doing anything no, yeah. all you do is yeah I mean think about Jesus when he would heal people by their faith there was usually some action on their part that was required by him you know the blind man he put the he said to go wash go wash that off the lepers told them to go show yourselves to the priests, and as they went, they were healed. You even think back in the uh, the Old Testament, uh, Naaman told him to go dip in the river seven times. And, of course, you know, when he told him that, he was still a leper, so he had to go down there, and it wasn't until he came up the seventh time that he was healed. So there's always something something we need to do to show that we believe that we have faith that God's word is so uh, it's so it takes an action now it's not the action that saves us right the action is just showing that hey we believe right? but the action is necessary now the uh, exception I think you would have there if you think about it, 
you know, the thief on the cross. Yes. Right. But he did he did confess Jesus as a savior and asked him to save him, but there was nothing else he could do. But he, he, he talked to the other thief. He, yeah. He did he did talk to the other thief saying, Why are you uh, you know condemning this man? He'd done nothing wrong. Yeah. But that was all he could do. And and that was enough. That that little bit. He showed his faith uh, in a situation that was probably not real easy to show any faith. Because he still knew he was going to die. I mean, the person he was asking to save him was in the act of dying. So, but that definitely uh, shows some faith. All right, so. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and Jesus says, where's your faith? What were they supposed to do? They were supposed to call out to God in the same way that God and Jesus had taught them to rely completely on God the other. They didn't rely on the other. They were struggling on their phone, trying to get it, you know, and they didn't have faith God that would take care of them. We're going to grab Yeah, it's, all, I find it interesting. By that point in time, they were all pretty much convinced that Jesus was the chosen one, that he was the Messiah. When he's in the boat with them during the storm, so you should know, well, if he's the Messiah, God's not going to let that boat go down, uh, or at least not with all hands on board. You know, They're not going to perish at sea. Something will happen to deliver them. And, uh, yeah, so that's a good example, a very good example. All right, so we're going to look now at some more words of Paul. And look at his attitude toward works, because people, again, they make the accusation that James has one opinion and the other Bible writers have another. So we're going to go first to Ephesians 2.10. Let's see, where did we leave off? We left off right here. All right, so Ephesians 2.10, who's, okay, she's looking it up. And then uh, 1 Thessalonians 1.3. You have it over here? All right, well. Rodney, you want uh, 1 Timothy? Yes. All right, 1 Timothy 5.25, and then we can go to the table back here, either Charlene or Philip, for Titus 2.14. Okay. All right, so we'll start with Ephesians 2.10. Also, you which God prepared you on the last class to do. All right, so Paul said that we are created for what? For good works that were prepared for us, right? God made us to do good works. God has prepared good works for us to each one of us has a different work that God has set for us to do. Uh, that's why I hear uh, some people say, well, it doesn't matter if I don't go talk to that person because God will send someone else. I say, well, I'm sure God may send someone else, but you may be just the right person to reach that person. And if you don't say something, the next person may not have any connection, may not. I mean, they may just ignore that person. Now, they're still, I mean, they're still going to be, uh, you know, at fault for rejecting the message. But their odds are that the chosen messenger probably would have had a better chance of them receiving the word. So that the argument that God will just send someone else is not a good argument. It's not a good argument. All right, and now First Thessalonians one three. Um, we continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So notice that he's remembering their deeds, but notice what he's saying is the uh, the source of the deeds. Right, they're doing this for the Lord. They're doing it out of love, right? Expressing their hope, right? It's not to earn any favors, right? This is an expression of their faith, is creating that works. And now, First Timothy five twenty five. Likewise, also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. All right, so the good works are manifested, cannot be hid. So it comes out. It's not something that you could just hide. It's going to show. 
it should be evident. And Jesus said you'd know them by their fruits, right? Fruits, the fruits are what we produce. It's what we work, what we do. And in Titus 2, 14. Who gave himself for us that we might bring that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. All right. So I, I like that. That's So he's not just talking here about doing good works. He's also talking about purifying you from the bad things. And it says that he's making them zealous for good works. So it's, just, it's, it's something, when you're zealous for something, it's something you really want, right? You're... I can't really think of a great a great way to explain zealous other than that, but you know zealots uh, in old times they were these were people who were really passionate about something. So these people who are if they're zealous towards good works, do you think they're just checking off a list? No. No, for them these people this is real, right? This is what I'm here for. This is my purpose, is to do this. Uh, you know, God put me here for this reason. It yes, Ron. It speaks to a heart change, right? It is. It is a heart change. You're not looking to do this work so that other people will think highly of you. You're not trying to impress anyone. You're doing it because of it is who you are. And that is a completely different take than what a lot of people put on when they, they look at works. I know a lot of people, uh, when they look at why there's some, the church population tends to be older. And a lot of younger people, I've heard them express it a few while, you know, they know they're getting getting close to their end, so they're trying to earn oh. earn, earn their ticket to heaven. I'm like, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of these people have been here their whole life. Some of us have, have had some side tracks, and it's taken us a while to get there. But yeah, it, it has nothing to do with that. We're just, we know where we're going, and we know this is this is where how we're going to get there. Is it possible? Well, to what? Yes. Is that out of the world? Yeah. That's not a plan that I would advise anyone to follow. God knows our heart, yeah. Now, are there deathbed conversions? Absolutely. There are people who come to truth at the very end of life, but that's not a good plan. It's not a good plan because what happens? You say, okay, you know, when, when I come to an ER and I know the doctor tells me, hey, I'm going to die, I'll, I'll make the chase. Well, what if you don't make it to the ER? You know, that's, it's not a good plan. And you read through the text in the Bible, it always says uh, today is the day that you need to make that change. There's no better day than today. You can't do it yesterday, and you better not wait till tomorrow because tomorrow may not come. I think you're held accountable. You know, there are some people yeah. that don't have to go ahead and offer them you could know. Whatever you do know, you just take that and say, I'm going to wait till I'm old. You know, so again, like. Yeah. And it's interesting you bring that up because I believe God, He reveals things to you in stages. You know, he doesn't just come out and hit you with everything all at once uh, because you are accountable for what you know, but also because why would I want to give you all of this information if you're not doing anything with this little bit I gave you first, mm -hmm. right? So I know there's a good book out there, uh, Just Enough uh, Light for the Step I'm On. So it's you think about it, the, the Bible refers to God's Word as a lamp unto my feet. So you think about it, he's just giving you enough light for that next step. He doesn't need to shine the whole the whole road for you. You don't need to see the whole road. You just need to know where to put your foot. And as long as you have can see where you're putting your foot and it's a solid place, then you're in good shape. You're in a good spot. I always just wondered, why do they phrase it like that? A lamp into my feet. And now I, I kind of get that. All right. Um, so that's just a thought for you. Yeah. Sometimes things like that come to me as I read verses over and over again. That's why I said I'll never get tired of reading the Bible because there's always something new to dig out. All right, so that brings us to the question then, why are good works so important? If we know we're not saved by our works, why are they important? I don't have all the answers, so y'all feel free to speak up. Um, when you say there's no works, part of it is just 
Mm-hmm. You know, you're trying to follow God, and so these are things that you do not for yourself, but because of what the what is put in your voice here. Like, okay, commitment to God. It's commitment to God. Okay, yeah. I I, I like I like that. Now I don't want to get lean too heavily into things like we're supposed to and, and things like that. But I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, you look like you had a thought. It's an act. You believe in so that others can see your life, what okay. you're doing, and it's a, like a light in the world. So it's what? it's applying what you've learned and what you know. Okay. I like that. So, some you want to share one of your knowledge with them. Okay. Now, it, without those good works, is it safe to say that you know, no one's going to see anything in you that's really going to want them to make any change. Right. We're, it's, it's like, I think about it all the time. You know, a lot of, uh, Christian churches are taking all kinds of extreme efforts to become more like the world so they can draw people in. The problem is then what you have, right? It's, it, it, you're, it's just the world, but now you're in a building that looks like a church. And uh, and what you're doing is just what the world's doing, and not you're not really changing anybody. Although you can rake in some money yeah. doing that, and some of them, yeah, some of them are living high on the hogs. Well, it's like the analogy I used about the uh, the canoe. You know, if you're going to be crossing Lake Michigan, you're in great shape as as with the uh, the canoe in the lake, as long as the lake doesn't get into the canoe. Right, if the lake starts getting in the canoe, you got problems. Right, and I would not take a canoe out on Lake Michigan. That that's if you, if you sell, you've been stay real close to the shore because Lake Michigan can get rough. <laughs> but, yeah, canoe would be not the way to go. Yeah, it's a really big lake, and they have massive storms sometimes. There's all kinds of shipwrecks yeah. in, in the bottom of Lake Michigan. Yeah, it's one of the it's the Great Lakes. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty big. Yeah, if you ever get a chance, go up to uh, the dunes. You can go to the Indiana Dunes. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. It's cool. I like to go go to the dunes, climb up on the dunes, and look, and you cannot see across. Yeah, it does. It looks like you're at the beach on the ocean. But we digress. <laughs> so we agree. So it works. Uh huh. I believe in God. Like when you believe in something, to take on their uh, what they believe in, mm -hmm. and so I want to, I want my life to be what his was because I believed in him. Or if I love him, I want to like him and him with me. Yeah. And both ways affects how you live, yeah. the works you do. Yeah. Right. So we. So if 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 there's no works. Then we doubt that you believe or that you love. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If there's no works, there's no indication right. of any change. Uh, there's no uh, there's no sign that you are actually a follower of Jesus. So that's that's a good point. But again, the the, the works are evidence of the change, not um, something that is going to earn you any benefits. All right. All right, so now here's an interesting question then. So why should the great news that we cannot work our way to heaven motivate us out of love for God to do all the good works that we can? If you can't work your way to heaven, right? how can, how can this, this fact that we're not saved by works motivate us to do good works? It's my response to what he did for me that I couldn't do. Okay, I like that. It's a uh, response. It's the motivation. Anything also, there's nothing you can do in that would, you know, be what you love. God's glory. I don't think there's anything you can do that will be enough. Like any good works that you truly do, that will be enough. It's an amazing thing. 
because I thought God Himself is so good and He gives us yeah. bigger things. Like, what could possibly be? Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. I, I, I like where you're going there. I, I think a lot of people, they, they look at the task as being too big, right? It's too big for me, right? God needs to call someone else for this. I can't do it. But the good news is it's not up to you, right? It's not, there's nothing I can do to save myself, so I don't have to worry about saving myself. I just trust that God's doing it because he said he would. So I just trust that he's going to do his word, and then I just do my part. Whatever it is he asks me to do, I do it. It'll either have great results or not either way it's him not me so it doesn't matter yeah right i i come i'll do these bible studies every week as long as there's someone willing to listen and take part we'll do studies you know if nobody's ever saved by that you know I, that'd be sad but again it's not up to me to save anybody it's up to me to share the word right so we'll share the word and we share it in as many ways as we can, wherever we can. And we do have a lot of people who, who listen and uh, enjoy, enjoy the word and share the words and they share it with other people. I don't know what the end result will be, but that's not up to me. So I don't, I don't spend a lot of time stressing about it. I do sometimes, and I admit this is fault, sometimes I stress that over the fact that there aren't more members involved in this, uh, but... Again, I can't control what they do. I just make it available. And those who will, will. Yeah. And I think it also makes it fair, too, because imagine if you just came to the church and you see, like, it may be in situations and other Christians who have been, maybe they were born and raised or they've been in church for a long time and say, mm -hmm. how many works do I need to do to catch up to where they are? Yeah. And then also people who may be, you know, overachievers, overworkers, they may think, well, I'm doing all this work and they're looking at someone else like, you know, I'm more valuable because I'm a leader in the church or I'm doing all these things. But God says, no, all of that is equal. Yeah, I, I find it, it is comforting to know that the pastor isn't any more saved than the person that just accepted the word. Okay. We're all equally saved, right? We're all getting the same reward, right? Which is eternity. I mean, how can you add to eternity? Right? You, you really can't. You know, I mean, we know there's mansions in heaven. I mean, how big is that? Does it really matter how big the mansion is? It doesn't, right? Uh, it, it makes no difference. Uh, so the reward's the same, and it doesn't matter how long you've been saved, you're still just as saved as a person who just came in and accepted the truth. So nobody has... Uh, in advantage as far as salvation goes, that goes. Now, you may have some advantages as far as you've learned some things uh, which you can share with that new person and maybe keep them from tripping over some of the things we've stumbled over. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, there is a purpose for people who have been around for a while and have more knowledge, and they're supposed to share that. Uh, Paul tells us that the, the gifts that we receive are for the edification of the body, which is everybody not to keep to yourself all right we gotta keep moving i just saw what time it was yeah <laughs> all right so let's talk about the faith of demons now would we agree that the faith of demons is not a saving faith yeah <laughs> all right that i'm glad we all agree so let's just read some text and then we'll hit the question all right uh where did we leave off i think we just did the back tips so we'll come back up here and go around again uh second corinthians 4 2 Two. Paula, we'll start with you, and then we'll go around again. Then 1 Timothy 2, 4, and then James 5, 19, and 20, and that would be Tyann, and then 1 Peter 1, 22, and then 1 John 3, 18, and 19. And if we get to the next slide, Rodney, then you would be first on that one. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Two. But we renounce the hidden things of shame, not cracking us nor healing the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. All right. So if you think about that, it says so not handling the word of truth deceitfully. Right. When uh, Satan was quoting the Bible, quoting scripture. I shouldn't say the Bible. Back then it was just scripture. They didn't have a full Bible. Uh, to Jesus, when he was tempting him, 
Was he misleading it, yeah. using it? Yeah. He was telling it, twisting it. Yeah. So he was misinterpreting and trying to deceive using the truth. All right. So that is something a demon would do. That is not something we should do. What verse did Satan quote? I would have to go back and actually look at it because it'll reference my Bible will reference. I can go back and see where it was where it was from, but I don't off the top of my head know. I know that uh, they quoted uh, Isaiah quite a bit. Uh, it was had to have been uh, one of the major prophets. Yeah, I'd have to I'd have to go look. But that's a great question. But all right, go ahead and next next verse. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? Mm -hmm. All right. So God desires for men to come to a knowledge of truth. So he wants us to know the truth. And then James 5, 19 and 20. My brother, if any among you strays from the truth, one turns him back. Let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. All right, so someone who turns from the truth can be saved by turning back to the truth. Now, we know that the demons are all fallen angels, right? They had the truth, and they turned away from it. Have they ever turned back? No. No. Uh, 1 Peter 1, 22. Since you find an abuse to your soul for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another. Oh, I like that. All right. And then the last one, 1 John 3, 18 and 19. Dear children, focus on the words or speech, or passions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and that we set our hearts at rest in his presence. All right. So that one, Come on. <laughs> that last verse ties actions yeah. to truth right it ties it together mm -hmm. so if you put all these verses together what's it telling us about how important knowing the truth is it's imperative so we don't get we don't get to see mm -hmm. and also so we don't even accidentally misinterpret it to others right absolutely i always say is it important is what you believe important yeah absolutely it, it's crucial to be difference of life and death, especially we know at the end time. I'm not going to get into that because this isn't a study on the end time. But, you know, people say it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. I'm saying, okay, take someone who is very sincere that gravity does not apply to them. Right? Take them up to the top of the Sears Tower. <laughs> yeah. Step off. Mm -hmm. Does gravity apply? Yeah. yeah. What you believe matters, right? What you believe matters. I mean... How bad would it be if I believed that I could fly a jumbo jet, right? And I managed to convince other people, because I'm sincere, hey, I'm a pilot, I'm a trained pilot. I go in there and I got into the cockpit of jumbo jet and managed somehow to take off with that thing. I not, I probably wouldn't make it off the ground. I probably would hit something uh, before that ever happened, but that would be disastrous. Uh, not just for me, but for everybody who followed me, who actually believed because I was so sincere. So, yeah, what you believe is crucial. Without the truth, you can't follow it with the right actions. Right? So in order to apply the truth, you have to know the truth. Now we get here, uh, James 2.19. If we look at James 2.19, I'll... Let Rodney read this one because he didn't get to read last time. And it's the only verse on this screen. God believe us that there is one God. God do us well. The devils also believe and tremble. All right, so think about that. So is it enough just to believe in God? No. I mean, the, the devils don't just believe, they know. I mean, they have seen God face to face. They have been in his holy place, right? They have been to heaven. They know what's there, but they tremble. Why do they tremble? 
know their fate. They know their fate because they've turned away from the truth. No. 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 I feel like also Jesus died or paint. Yeah. At at this point in time, I mean, you think about it. Their their soul bent uh, or everything they do is directed on taking away as many souls as possible from God. Even though they know they're going to lose, the only purpose for that is they can know that that is going to pain God through eternity. So even after they're long gone, and even after all of our tears are dried up, God is still going to be hurting. Right, that that is a, a pain that I don't think will, it, it'll never be healed. Now he's God, so he has the ability to handle that. You imagine, you know, if we didn't have some release from the loss of our loved ones who aren't going to be there, people we know, you know, if that just if if God didn't take that away from you, how what kind of eternity would that be? You're just constantly suffering. So the demons, the devils, the fallen angels, however, whatever term you want to use for them, right now they know their time is short and they're just trying to rack up a body count, if you will. So uh, they are beyond redemption. All right, so let's look at... I know, Satan is beyond. Yeah. You know, the Bible says, do you not know that you will judge angels? Yeah. So we're going to be judging whether or not, hey, did, did, were they deceived? And so they were cast out. So, but yet, you know, kind of been reinstated back in, you know. Um, I guess the love of God to me is that he yearns for them just as much as he yearns for us. And that, always the, at the cross, it took the cross for even the angels in heaven, the good angels, to understand what what the God was talking about with Jesus and the love, you know. Yeah. And, and so if, if it took the cross for them, it would have also taken, you know, that would have made an impression on the evil angels as well. You know, I, I guess I, I think the love of God is that he would try to reach them in the cloud. And some of them are going to be hardened by Satan, but some of them might have really looked at that cross and said, I, I made a wrong decision. Yeah. You know? I don't no. I I don't know. I, I don't know. But obviously if after the cross they're still running around trying to get people to sin and turn their backs on God and all that, they have chosen. They have deliberately chosen the side they want to be on. And and it's not that God can't forgive them. They don't have the desire to be forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. Well. So that's. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I have a hard time imagining any fallen angels being saved after the cross. But I'm not God. And like I said, we will get to judge to see uh, how that goes. But anyhow, where were we going with this? First Timothy 4 1. Did we read that already? No. No. Go ahead and read that. Or did oh wait yeah. um, we need to deceive the church and doctrine of the Right. So this does get to the end time. So I, I'm okay with talking about this as part of the study. Right. So it says that in the end times, people are going to be deceived by doctrines that are put forth by the by the demons, false teachings that are there deliberately to lead people astray. And as a result, many people are going to be lost. So the faith of demons is a faith that's going to lead you astray. It's a faith that's going to lead you away from God to the point that you're actually lost instead of saved. I know my alarm's about to go off, so I'm just getting to where I can silence it. Yeah. Because me and my sister... You know, Jesus in Matthew comes when you hear wars of war and wars happening and conflict, oh, it's the end, everything's over. In the end, it's not yet. 
But it's when the word has been spread every, everywhere that everyone, what does that mean? Something like everyone, literally everyone, we make an unconscious, conscious, conscious thought, just choice, conscious thought. So if you don't care for the word of God, I, people who are not going to be saved, that is. Yeah, I, I get what you're asking. God would not condemn somebody who didn't have an opportunity to make a choice. He, he's going to know their hearts, what they did. Now, th- there will be people who are saved, I think, who've never seen a Bible, never heard a sermon, and don't know who Jesus is. But in their heart, right, they, they've lived by the truth they know because God reveals himself in nature as well. Uh, there's other ways that he's, he reveals himself. Uh, and so I believe there's going to be a lot of people in heaven who have no clue who Jesus is until they get there, and they'll find out. You know, the chips can see Jesus. Well, if you've never heard the word, if you've never heard the name Jesus, right, but you've lived by what you see that God has revealed himself in nature, you know there's a God, and you believe in God. Now, God, of course, Jesus is God as well. So when they get there, it'll all be explained to them, and they'll understand that these things that they've taken by faith without knowing all the truth uh, is just going to be uh, amazing for them. But there's going to be... Um, everyone is going to have the opportunity to decide, okay, this, God's revealed himself to here, but, you know, I really don't want to believe in that. And they'll say, you know, that's too hard. I don't want to change how I am. And they'll deliberately turn away. It's like people who will choose not to go listen to a speaker because they're afraid they might hear something that will convict them to make a change. And they say, I really don't want to give this up. And I've heard that this person really, people go to talk to him and they give up all these things. I don't want to give that up. So I'm going to say no to that. Well, when you say no to that, you're saying no to the opportunity to hear something that could save your life. You are rejecting God, not the speaker. So there will be people who will fall into that category. So you got to be careful when the opportunity comes to take it. Um, but yeah, there, and there'll be multiple opportunities. It's not going to be one time I say, well, I'm not going to go because I'm afraid he might hear it. God's going to keep sending people. He's going to keep send, knocking on that door. And um, if you keep shutting that door, eventually you're not going to hear the knock. Some people say, I'm not just going to shut the door. I'm going to go to the back of the house so I can't hear it. Maybe I'll put headphones on over my ears and do all kinds of things to distract myself. All right. Well, we're about out of time. We do have, uh, I'm just going to read this last little bit here from James 2, where it talks about, it talks about Abraham and Rahab. So I'll read these last few verses. We'll talk about them for a few minutes. Uh, and then if you've got the email I sent out with the study, you can actually work through the questions and read the text. But starting at James 2.21, says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works? When he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar, do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by the works, faith was made perfect? So you got to remember the scene at the altar. Now, he's not saying he was saved because of his work. He was justified. The fact that he was willing to sacrifice his son because God told him to do that was a display that justified his faith. This is proving that he has the faith that he needs in order to be saved. He had faith because he knew that Isaac was the promised child, and even if I have to sacrifice him, God can raise him from the dead. That had to be interesting because you remember he told Sarah, or he told his servants that they would come back together. Yeah. So he knew that we're going up there. No matter what happens up there, we're both coming down. So he had that kind of faith. Well, you think about it too. Abraham's like 120 or 140 or something like that here. Isaac's a strapping youth in the prime of health. If Isaac did not want to be a willing participant, Abraham could not have forced him. 
So, but anyhow, that's that part. And then it says, uh, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. So it's because he believed God, he trusted God, and then he sh- his actions showed his faith. And then it talks about Rahab. You, uh, verse 24, you see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? And think about what uh, her example. She knew that the city was going to fall. And they, what were the instructions they told her? Put a, hang a little cord out your window, Right. So hang this little scarlet cord, and you and everyone in your house will be safe. I'm like, you can imagine what she was thinking when the walls started falling down. And she's in, because her she had to have been on the wall for her to let them out. So she she had to have been built into the wall. Yeah. Now, yeah, Rahab. And so as all that's going on, and she's like, that little that little scar that little rope hanging out her window is not keeping her apartment up. Right, it was miraculous that it did not fall with the rest, but that was displaying her faith. And you think any any time a soldier could look over the wall, seeing that rope, and says, "What's that for?" And but she had it out there. She put it out there because that's what they said to do, and she had faith. And because of that, she and her whole household were saved. All right, we're out of time. Uh, I said we'd end by seven fifteen at seven twelve. So I want to leave time. Any closing thoughts in prayer? Any closing thoughts before prayer? No? All right. Well, th- study. it is good study. Uh, y'all know I could go for, I can go on and on and on. So I'm, I'm glad that Charlene's here to keep me. <laughs> Finders are not letting us in the day. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, let's clo- close with prayer. Let's close with prayer and yeah. Let's, 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 let's have prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this study. Uh, we know we didn't get all the way through it, and there's more truths yet for us to dig out. And I ask that you will encourage those who may review this study later uh, to finish that study. We thank you for the truth, Lord. We know that we are not saved by our works, but that our works show our faith in you. We ask, Lord, that you will give us the faith to do these works. Give us the courage to stand for you. We thank you for asking these things in Jesus' name. Amen.